Hey guys, I am just letting my car warm up for a minute and I, there was something that I was reading today and I wanted to share that with you guys and there was, it related to can you feel pain from your intestinal tract? And it's really, it's a good question because a lot of people, um, they have, they, they, well a question comes up, if I'm having, if I have inflammation or if I have um, an issue with my digestive tract wouldn't I know? Wouldn't it hurt? Like, you know, if I sprain my ankle or I have some type of, I injure myself, I'm sore and things, and it hurts. So if I have inflammation in my di in my digestive tract, why wouldn't I have, why wouldn't I, f I feel that in my gut? So a lot of people don't realize this, but you're in your, in your intestines, you don't have pain fibers. Did you guys know that? That in the, hi Janice, did you guys know that in the intestines you do not have pain fibers? So you may not even feel anything. If so, how do you know? Because it's obvious, right? If you if you sprain your ankle, it's very sore and it swells up, so it hurts and it's painful. But if you have bowel inflammation, what, you, you know you don't have the same type of of signaling system to tell your brain that. That there's that there's inflammation, that there's a that there's a problem there because you don't have pain fibers in the digestive tract. Did you guys know that? Hey Karen, how are you guys doing? Hey Samantha, hey Doreen, hey Connie. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I guess I'm letting my car warm up a little bit. So I was I was, uh, I was doing some reading, and this is something that I learned about you know several years ago, but it, not many people are aware of this that your digestive tract your digestive tract does not have it does not have um, pain fibers in it. So how do we, you know, how do we know? Because it's not as easy. You can't perceive the pain like you can a, a sprained ankle or something, right? So, so what, what do you feel? Does anyone? I'm going to tell you guys exactly. So, um, <clears throat> the question is basically. So how, how do we feel pain? Hey Rose. Um, so uh, guys, so how, how do you know? How do you know if? Um, how do, you, how do you, do you know if there's a problem with your gut? Like, if you can't feel pain, then how do you? How do you know what's happening there? Well, the most common symptom, can anyone tell me what is the most common symptom that's going to indicate that there's a, that there's a problem that's, that's um, likely, like, like inflammation, for example. So what type of symptom might you have that would give you a clue that you have an inflamed gut or an inflamed digestive tract? Does anyone know? Heather, you're the first person that commented she got it right. Yes, Samantha, you guys got it right. So Heather said, um, Heather said bloating. Exactly, guys. So you do have you do have nerve endings that that will relay to your brain stretch or distension in your gut. So if you bloat and you feel bloated and and you just you know that's that is one very clear sign that there's something occurring there. Now, guys, you could have bacteria that are fermenting, and it might not be necessarily like bowel inflammation. It could be actually gas, right? But then you would know because you would have a symptom of, of increased gas production. So you'd know if there's, there's a difference. Now, like bacterial, bacterial overgrowth, as with, we see with, with SIBO, like small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, that can create inflammation. But I'm talking about like like gut wall inflammation and and um, significant you know significant bloating is a very very good sign that there's that there's um, likely an inflammatory process occurring. So um, yeah so okay but so if someone says I feel pain in my gut well listen guys it's not necessarily coming from the bowel it's stretch it's different types of nerve endings that are that are firing to the brain okay so it's not a it's not the the same pain fibers that we have in our ankle right now there's um, the systemic inflammation that occurs like if you have an inflamed gut it does increase the sensitivity of nerves everywhere so because gut guys if you sprain if you sprain your ankle a lot of times we just perceive the inflammation and the swelling and the pain in the ankle but do you realize that the that the inflammatory it goes, it circulates throughout the body. Now, think about if you're, imagine if your digestive tract was inflamed. If your digestive tract was inflamed and you had an inflamed colon or small intestine, that's, that's a lot of surface area that's inflamed. That will, that will promote um, a tremendous amount of systemic inflammation which can sensitize pain fibers. So listen, anyone that has chronic pain, you've got to, look. If looking at, 
you know, I mean, sincere, seriously looking at their gut and asking them about their gut function is not unreasonable because increased gut inflammation will promote increased sensitivity throughout the body to to pain fibers, C fibers. It's the type of it's a type of nerve fiber, C fiber. So um, the let's see. So Linda, what about pain in feet, hands, or joints? Can that happen too? Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure, like, can, can, so systemic inflammation will increase the sensitivity throughout the entire body. Um, so if you have, like, let's say, say, digestive tract inflammation, for example, and you have increased inflammatory chemistry circulating through the bloodstream, that, that can increase the, the, um, bring the threshold of firing of nerves closer to the, to, closer to firing. So it makes pain fibers more easily stimulated, okay? So, Linda, when you say, what about pain in feet and hands or joints, can that happen too? I'm wondering, is that is that what you're like? If you have so, if you have increased systemic inflammation, it can make anything hurt more. So I'm not sure if I understand the question completely. Okay, Renee says so. When I when I accidentally eat gluten, I feel the pain um, all of the way through. So it's hard to say exactly what kind of pain you're feeling, guys. Like um, you can be like definitely doubled over from from pain, but is that the stomach or is that the intestinal tract or is that due to really increased stretch that you're perceiving that, that, that sharp pain. To around, um, so, in case I can roll blood test. so um, hi Evelyn. Evelyn. Evelyn jumped in, guys. If you have questions, um, I'm gonna sit here for like three or four more minutes. So you can shoot with some questions and I'm gonna try to answer them. Um, Evelyn says, hi Dr. Shook, I'm from the Caribbean. My, an my anti-TPO, so her, t uh, her thyroid peroxidase antibodies are around 200 something. Her TSH is normal. Um, what blood test? Can I take to see if my adrenals are okay? Okay, so um, Evelyn, here's the here's what I would tell you. Um, you know, in similar cases, what this tells you is that you have you, you're autoimmune. So if you have high antibodies, you're autoimmune. Guys, there's a priority. There's there's a a, a, a um, there's an order of approach that you want to take when you're working on trying to improve your health. So if you know you're autoimmune, you want to make sure that you're dampening the autoimmune process because you can't ignore the autoimmune process. And, and Evelyn, so here's the thing. I wouldn't start with the adrenals first. I would actually focus on improving the immune function. Like in a similar case to yours, what I would do clinically is, is I would try to help the person identify the drivers of the autoimmune process. So I would look for food reactions, food sensitivities. I would look for chronic infections. I would look for environmental chemical reactivity. I would make sure that there are no nutrient deficiencies. I would work to um, improve immune system regulation. So doing things like improving vitamin D levels if they're low. And then I would look at this. I would look at the hormones at that point. I would look at progesterone and estrogen and testosterone, and, and I would look at cortisol. But, but really, I would focus like a good starting place. Like let's say, if you if you didn't have access to get testing done or or to dig deeper on this stuff, I would look at starting like a dietary program that is very high in nutrients, very low in, in processed foods that are in, in, in high in whole foods that are more anti-inflammatory. So, um, Evelyn, here's the thing. Adrenal gland issues are always secondary to something else. So autoimmunity produces inflammation as a byproduct. If the autoimmune process isn't addressed or dampened, if you, if you can't dampen that autoimmune process, the adrenal glands will be working overtime to produce cortisol because cortisol has anti-inflammatory effects. So I would never start like with, I would never start with the adrenals. I would try to survey and see what's happening. So if we know that you're autoimmune, dietary changes are a great place to start. You can do like an autoimmune paleo diet. It's reasonable. You could try something like um, like we have a six week the six week Hashimoto's transformation program. That's a great diet, lifestyle, and even supplemental approach. That's a good place to start and do that for a, for one month or two months. And in, in in a lot of cases that works and that helps to improve a lot of things at one time. That's not unreasonable, but I would start on dampening inflammation, improving the, the immune system, uh, immune response, and the adrenals will oftentimes improve as a result of that. You can do things, now if you know there's an, the adrenals are, are, are exhausted due to chronic problems like you know uh, chronic food sensitivities or infections or whatever, then yes, you can support them at the same time you're trying to address what's causing the problem. All right, I wanna make that clear to you guys though. 
you don't want to just <clears throat> because the adrenals are always in response to something else adrenal gland problems are always secondary to something else secondary to autoimmunity secondary to chronic infections secondary to um, uh, to food sensitivity, secondary to environmental chemical reactivity. They're secondary. They're, they respond to something else, but they're, they're never, never the primary problem. And even when you have autoimmunity against the adrenals, like with Cushing's disease or Addison's disease, that's secondary. But the, the adrenals are failing due to, a, due to an autoimmune process. Okay? So addressing the autoimmunity is critical. Evelyn, I hope that helps give you some perspective. Hey, Linda. Hey, Jessica. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, so Jessica, Jessica says, why do I feel a lot more pain during my luteal, luteal phase? Jessica, the, the obvious answer, which you already know, is, is it's, going to be, um, it's going to be hormonal, obviously, right? But why are the hormones not, not, um, not optimal? And so anytime you see hormonal issues, I always backtrack. And what I mean by that is hormonal issues can be caused by adrenal dysfunction. Adrenal gland dysfunction is, is, is always secondary, like I just said, to other problems like blood sugar. Blood sugar will, will wreak absolute havoc on your adrenal glands and your sex hormones. Guys, I have seen women literally skip a menstrual cycle due to stress. Like literally, they have stress, they miss an entire menstrual cycle and start back the next month. Because the stress response will cause you to produce excessive cortisol. Producing cortisol depletes your body of pregnenolone, a hormone that you have to have to produce progesterone and estrogen. So if you're under tremendous stress and you're constantly producing cortisol and you're depleting your pregnenolone, you won't have adequate pregnenolone to, to, for, for your cycle. So Jessica, that's a tough one. It's a really tough one. Um, I wish I could answer it better. I hope that helps you get some perspective. Fibromyalgia, um, Amanda, I, when I first started into practice, I, that's, that's really what I focused on was working with fibromyalgia. And I'm going to tell you right now, like the primary thing that I found was that fibromyalgia was an, an undiagnosed thyroid-related issue. So there was a breakdown in the thyroid hormone physiology somehow. Now, you guys know I teach thyroid because that's primarily what I work with. But I teach thyroid physiology a lot. And, and what, I, what you need to know about the thyroid is that Thyroid hormone quantity is not the is not the only thing. I mean that's critical if you know nothing else. Thyroid hormone quantity is only one part of the of the, the puzzle of, of why you might have thyroid, low thyroid related symptoms. Because what's most important is is the thyroid hormone that you have, is your body able to use it? So can it be transported? Can it be converted from T4 into T3? Can, can the thyroid hormone actually get to the cell and, and stimulate cell, cellular physiology? Guys, without all that, that whole process, which can break down at least, at least 24 ways, and thyroid hormone quantity is one, with all of that, I mean, what is, it's, it's just a much more complicated picture than just quantity of hormone. So fibromyalgia, though, is what I found, um, Amanda, is that there's something usually that's disrupting the, the body's ability to utilize the, the, thyro the thyroid hormone, and it's inflammation or, you know, these, the, all these drivers that I, that I talk about, like, it seems like I feel like I say it so much that um, I'm just saying the same thing over and over, and, but it's so true. I mean, you've got to look at, like, these core drivers of the process, and, you know, a good place to start for anyone, just about for anyone, I'll say just about for anyone, um, is, is always with diet, guys. It's always with diet if you don't have access to someone that you can work through this stuff with, okay? I hope that helps, Amanda. You're welcome, Evelyn. Hope it helps you out. Hi, Renee, intestinal tract. Yep. Um, Jessica, all over body pain. Yeah, so the fibromyalgia, right? That, that increased... Um, that increased sensitivity. So remember, I said like inflammation, right? Like inflammation can sensitize the C the C fibers uh, in throughout your body. So there's, you've got guys. Something that's so important is that, just from a conceptual perspective, everything in the body's connected. So if you have dysfunction in one system, it can feed over into other areas. And you can't sometimes what thinks you you think might be obvious, like well, is it my thyroid or, or what is going on? It's not looking directly at the thyroid to get the answer. It might be like looking at the gut, the digestive tract, to get the answer to why your thyroid hormone's not um, not not converting properly or why you can't utilize it eff effectively. You, that's why it's like a whole person approach, and that's not like some kind of like you know esoteric out there in the world kind of um, you know thing that I'm trying to say. I mean, really, you've got to look at the whole person because it's a it's a systems 
it's a it's a whole body systems approach. You you look at everything and how it works together. You don't just look at everything in isolation and say, well, all I do is the GI tract, so I don't know anything about any anything about the other systems of the body. You know, for a specialist that's doing surgery, okay. I mean, that's a very specialized area that they have to be really good at one thing. But but guys, everything works together. <laughs> we learn the body and systems, but everything works together and there's crosstalk between the systems of the body and the immune system and the inflammation produced has a profound impact on other systems, um, endocrine and the, the nervous system. It is huge, huge. Um, so everything's connected, um, just is. Um, so Linda says, does hypothyroidism manifest Sjogren's? Sjogren's is another autoimmune condition. Guys, if you have one, and so Linda, if, if you have Hashimoto's or Graves, then you have an autoimmune, you're, you're autoimmune, and that autoimmune process can expand to other tissues. It's really important to understand that there's about over 50% of people that have, have you know, two autoimmune conditions or more, okay? Poly autoimmunity is really, is not an uncommon thing. And so, yes, if you have, hypothyroidism 90% about 90% of hypothyroid cases are caused by Hashimoto's so if you have Hashimoto's you're autoimmune if you have Hashimoto's guys you haven't you have about a 50% chance of developing another autoimmune condition or already having one the thing is is a lot of people have no clue that they're autoimmune and a lot of people have no clue that they have a second or more autoimmune conditions because how's it diagnosed autoimmunity is diagnosed in medicine once it's at the end stage guys once it, is, once it is so progressed that it's blatantly obvious that the immune system has been destroying the body and it's been happening for 15, 20 plus years, and at that point it's in stage. It's like it's, it's hard to do anything about it. So what you've got to do is you've got to say, you identify if you're autoimmune and you, and you know through like, you know, the, the thyroid is, is one of the most susceptible glands to autoimmunity. If you know you're autoimmune or you get checked and you have antibodies, get on, get on it right then and be serious about dampening that autoimmune process so that you can reduce the chances of it expanding to other tissues. I mean, we're talking about like serious quality of life things and you know, it's something that's like, if it's not, a, for, for a lot of us, if it's not an immediate problem, then we're just like, well, I'll deal with it later. And, and I mean, I get it, but I'm just telling you right now, it could be a huge mistake, huge mistake. So yes, um, Linda, it could be that, it, yes, autoimmunity will expand and Sjogren's is, is, is autoimmune. I've worked with a lot of people that have multiple autoimmune conditions and Sjogren's comes up quite a bit. I hope, I hope that helps Linda. Um, dampening the, Linda, Linda, dampening the autoimmune process will be a key thing, a key thing. So food, reactivity to food, partially digested food proteins, so food sensitivities. Chronic infections, identifying them and removing them. Environmental chemical reactivity, identifying immune reactivity to chemicals and removing it. Addressing nutrient deficiencies within the body. And then, um, really, you know, you, you, everything you, you could connect, you could say stress, uh, cortisol, and then hormones are all relevant. But a good place to start, if there's one thing for, for someone in a similar situation, I might say dietary approach. What kind of dietary approach? Autoimmune paleo diet's a good place to start. Um, those are all reasonable, guys. And like the, the dietary program that we have works with any autoimmune condition. So, anyway, I hope that helps. I hope that helps you out, Linda. Appreciate that. If you guys are getting some benefit from this, please give me some thumbs up and some hearts because I'm my car's warmed up. I should be driving right now, but I'm going to talk to you guys because we've got a, quite a few people. I'm going to try to help you out. Um, I didn't get to do question and answer earlier today. I don't know if you guys saw my video, but I just didn't get to do any. I just didn't have time. Uh, guys, and then please do share this stuff with other people. The stuff that we're talking about, people have never, ever heard of it. So, so do your neighbors and your friends a favor and spread the word. Thank you for all the hearts and the, and the love. You guys are, you guys and thumbs up. You guys are so kind. Appreciate your, um, your support of me. So, um, let's see. H. pylori and pain made me go to the doctor. Yes. Okay. So H. pylori, guys, is a, is a bacterial infection. It's one of the most common bacterial infections in the United States. It is a huge, huge problem. H. pylori is a bacteria that gets in the, in the stomach. It burrows into the wall of the stomach. It shuts down stomach acid production, and then the bacteria flourish. The bacteria can then get into your bloodstream and go to other places, and we know it can trigger autoimmunity. So 
If you have H. pylori, it has got to go. That's a very, very common chronic infection. It can cause all kinds of gut dysfunction, GI tract dysfunction because it decreases stomach acidity. So you don't digest your food well. If you don't have adequate stomach acid concentration, then you won't stimulate the gallbladder or the pancreas to release enzymes into the food, and you'll, you'll have nutrient deficiency issues. You'll, have, you'll be more susceptible to bacterial overgrowth in the, in the intestinal tract. You'll be more susceptible to parasites, and you'll be more susceptible to fungal or candida or yeast overgrowth. So these infections, guys, are, are, are big problems and a lot of people have no clue that we have them. So I hope that, um, is it Shadia? Shadia Osman? I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Please forgive me. But she, uh, Shadia says, um, H. pylori and pain made me go to the doctor. Absolutely, man. Get rid of that stuff. And the most important thing I can tell you guys about chronic infections or H. pylori, if you test positive, treat it and then retest and make sure it's gone. Make sure it's gone because just because you treat it does not make sure it's gone. Okay, I hope that helps you guys out. Uh, I have never had a full panel. I've been to tell you might as right anyway. I want to start hitting. Probably have a full panel first. Okay, so um, Linda says, hey, I've had, I have um, been hypothyroid for 17 plus years, have never had a full panel done or been tested for Hashimoto's. It's crazy, right? I think so. Yes, I think so. I think a lot of people will agree. But under the guys that understand under the medical model, your doctors are, are they're they're not trying to you know they're not trying to be argumentative. They're not it's not saving them them any money by not ordering your test, like ordering more tests. But it's insurance it's it's the insurance companies dictating to them what they can and can't do. So it kind of puts them in a where they're in between you and the insurance company, and you're mad at them because you think they can't order it or they won't order it, and then they're trying. They can't order it because the insurance company will treat them like a like a criminal if they order something that's not consistent with the guidelines that they impose on the doctor. Guys, that's why that's why we don't I don't work with insurance because they treat you like a criminal if you try to help people. And it's until it's different, it, it's just I don't know what to say. I mean, I just it, it's a it's a it's a you have to. I don't know. It's really stressful. So, um, but Linda, sorry for the digression there. But she hasn't been tested, and anyway, she wants to start autoimmune paleo, but she feels like she should probably have a full panel first to see where she stands. Uh, is that a correct thought process? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I agree because, listen, if you can get at least some information on what's happening with your thyroid, inflammatory levels, and get a baseline before you start a dietary intervention, for, well, for one thing, you can have a better idea of what's driving the process. And, and really, ultimately, those initial labs yield a ton of beneficial information for a pretty low cost. Some of the advanced labs, like we get Cyrex labs testing, stool panel testing, advanced hormone panels, you can spend hundreds of dollars getting those tests done easy. The the um, the the blood tests through like LabCorp and stuff like we'll utilize are, are much more affordable and they give you great information. It's, if I had to say like what's the most valuable test, it's going to be the initial blood panel because it lets you look at inflammatory markers and all these things at one time that can really tell you a tremendous amount for the for, for the money it's the very best that you can you can do so but it gives you direction so you get an expanded blood panel and it gives you a lot of direction and then also it helps you to formulate like what are the most appropriate supplements that I might want to consider along with a dietary intervention so Linda I hope that helps out I hope that that makes a big difference uh, Rose I agree with you diet's a good start I hope you're doing well Rose um, let's see. So Rose says, what causes high blood pressure with hypothyroidism or is it the levothyroxine that causes high blood pressure? Rose, that's going to be very unique to you and to the individual. I mean, typically, typically hypothyroidism, what I see more commonly is low blood pressure. So if you have high blood pressure, it just depends on when it starts. Of course, if you're taking a medication or something and then it spikes up, well, then there's, there, there might be an association there with that. But usually with, with hypothyroidism, I see low blood pressure, guys. Not enough blood pressure. They can't, I mean, that's the number one reason, too, we see like people losing hair is, is because of low blood pressure because they can't get the blood to the scalp and they can't get the vitamins, the minerals, and, and all those nutrients to the hair follicle so that it will grow. So they have, they, they lose hair. So, Rose, I'm sorry I can't answer that more specifically, but I don't really, that's, that's going to be very unique to you, okay? Hope that makes sense. Um... 
good. I'm glad. Yeah, your menstrual cycles, guys. Menstrual cycles can be a huge problem, especially with causing anemia. If your menstrual cycles are really heavy or long, man, it can just you can lose all this iron and you can become anemic. And if you're anemic, you cannot heal because anemia means you can't carry oxygen to the cells of your body, and every cell needs oxygen. It's very, very foundational. So if you have anemia due to your menstrual cycle, then you absolutely have to. You've got to work on addressing what is causing the menstrual cycle irregularities. And guys, you always backtrack. Hormonal, hormonal imbalances and problems, look at adrenal function. Adrenal dysfunction, look at blood sugar, okay? I mean, that's, that's a very, very common way. Stress is also another cause. Um, Laura, Laura says, hey, can you tell me how we can sign up for the diet that you've been talking about? You said it was $50. Okay, so what we did, if you guys, like, I might forget that, I don't know the URL, like the website address. I think it's, it's either, it's either hot, it's, I'm just going to get them backwards. I'm going to get them backwards. There's, there's two words. It's like Hashimoto'sConsult.com. That's for a consultation. Here's the thing, guys. Like, you can get our, our six-week Hashimoto's transformation program. That diet, when we first, when we first started this program, the technology costs were a lot more expensive to get it started, first of all. But when we first, when I first started developing this program, it was basically based on the dietary approach that I was using with people that came into the office. We've been using it for like five years and constantly refining it and adding resources to it and taking this, this dietary framework with meal plans and everything. And, and I, we implemented it clinically. And then with the more people I was seeing, I realized it was taking me like it would take me and my staff at least two hours to teach someone in the office how to do this diet and give them these resources. And then they were just, their mind was blown and overwhelmed and, and we, were, we were drained. Our energy was just sapped from going through all this. So what we did was we put our dietary program that we refined over several years with lifestyle recommendations that we recommend and even the supplementation that we think is beneficial for most people into a program and we called it the six week Hashimoto's transformation program. So guys, you can go, like if you, like I think it's, so what I start, decided to do was, we, we started charging for our consultations, 15 minute consultations, which were free because I'm completely overwhelmed. And there's so many people and so many questions and it's just like, so we started charging, but what we did was we charged, th charged $50 for it. So you can get a consultation for 15 minutes and then what I said was, you know what, if I'm gonna charge for this, I'm gonna make sure that we give them something of high value. So our, our technology costs have come down some, so what we've done is we, we offer our, our Hashimoto's Transformation Program plus a 15 minute consultation so I can kind of strategize with you, see where you're at and try to give you some direction for $50. I think it's it's either thyroid consult, sorry I don't remember, thyroid consult or Hashimoto's consult.com and you can go there and like you can literally just, you, you can you can see, you can, uh, you'll see it be me in a video and you can um, explaining it and you can pay for it and you can get a consultation plus you'll get the um, the program and you'll get instant access to start going through it. It's six weeks, it's 10 modules. It's really, guys, it's, it's amazing. There's a private uh, Facebook support group for just specifically for it and that group is fantastic. So everyone's going through it and, and trying to help each other. So Laura, that's where you can see it. If you want to find the link, like seriously, just go to the office of Dr. Brad Shook, the page that we're broadcasting on here and, and go scroll down and like look at my live posts from the past few days and, and in the description you'll see it says consult with Dr. Shook and click on the link and it will take you there. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. I wish it, it's, it should be easier, but it's, it's not. I'm sorry. Uh, so Laura, I hope that helps. Cherie, you are um, welcome and you've had fibromyalgia since a child. I'm sorry. I hope that what I'm teaching you really helps you out and helps improve your health. If there's anything I can do, I will. Heather, you're welcome for this. Janice, um, yeah, I know I'm gonna keep saying it. Hopefully you guys do get it. Hi in Chicago, I, I, I wonder what it's like there. I'm in North Carolina and the weather is so back and forth here. Right now it's 38 degrees outside. So this Sunday it's gonna be 79. And, and yesterday it was probably like 65 or something. And now it's 38. So it's like back and forth. Like I, I didn't even wear a jacket today. Um, so whatever, um, but I bet it's cold up in Chicago, Linda. Teresa, how you doing? Evelyn, you are welcome. You are welcome for the information, and I'm glad. I hope it helps you guys out. Yeah, you, can, you guys can look at our transformation program um, and, and just uh, keep asking questions, and I'm going to keep trying to teach things. Guys, I'm trying to make these videos actually more concise because I know I get really long-winded, so I'm trying to, um, I'm really trying to make them more concise and like actionable and not go on for an hour and, you know, or two. <clears throat> 
hi Lisa I'm sorry you're having intestinal issues really Lisa if you haven't tried it you know in similar cases when people have gut dysfunction man diet can be a huge huge thing so the autoimmune trans the, the autoimmune paleo diets good uh, our program uh, transformation program is fantastic for that too um, even utilizing you know it's good listen guys if you if you're having problems you really need to see your doctor to make sure you don't have anything like a pathological process occurring sometimes you get sent through the ringer but you know what and I mean the ringer it's just the you know one thing comes up and they want to do a ton of diagnostic tests but you know my, my biggest concern with people is just get worked up right and then most of the people that I see and that I work with they've been through the medical model and it hasn't helped them or they're still having problems and they're just fed up so but let me just share with you something if you're having digestive problems most of the time if you're not eating a diet that's of a pretty much whole foods autoimmune paleo is good our transformation program works really really well as a framework and then a lot of times you can utilize some nutritional supplementation to help support your gut but it's really really important to get a good diagnosis and figure out what's causing your problems or guys you are going to waste time and money if you change your diet and you're doing a diet that you're not really thrilled about, that's gonna restrict all these things that you like, and then you're gonna buy supplementation, and you're gonna use supplementation, and then you're gonna do this for several months. Think about how much time you're losing, first of all, which you can never get back. Then think about how much money you're spending and how much sacrifice you're doing, you're taking as well. Consider getting an evaluation or testing done to figure out what the problem is. Then take specific action and intervention and get your health back faster. Okay, that's, I'm just gonna tell you guys, I see it all the time. I know money is an issue for, for, for people. Um, some people have more resources, so that's what I try to teach you guys. I work with people from all walks of life, and I try to teach you what to do. The first person that I ever helped, guys, that, when, that, that I ever really worked with doing functional medicine, um, I, I did a presentation I did a presentation at a, at a um, local hospital outreach clinic in, a, in one of our malls here. They, they have like a, an outreach clinic. And this lady, I was giving a talk on fibromyalgia, and she came, and, she, and when I got there, she was already there, but she was sitting and literally um, obese, arms crossed, just slumped over, and, and didn't move, didn't open her eyes, and I mean, um, tattered clothes, just I was just not sure what was going on, and I, and I was, I, I, you know, she was there for the presentation, so I knew she was having some problems, or I at least suspected that. So I go through my whole presentation, doesn't even look up, like the barely moves, <coughs> and um, after the presentation, everyone's leaving. I stayed around for a few a few questions, and this this girl was sitting beside her that comes up to me, and she goes, "Hey, my mom is over there, and she's got all these terrible problems, and I'm wondering if you can help her." And I'm like, "Great." There's, my first patient is like probably the worst, the worst patient that I could possibly, I could possibly, or that this person is, is someone that I would probably not take. It's probably going to be an extremely complex and difficult case and I have no idea if I can help them. And this lady, I said, you know what, if I don't help her, who is? If I don't try, who is? So I, I treat her pro bono and she literally comes in. And like we couldn't do any of the testing because I couldn't buy her testing for her and stuff. But what we did is we started on diet and literally guys, she had no money to really buy food. So guess what she does? She goes to the food pantry, she gets gluten free and she's determined. She comes in because at the time what I was doing was I was doing like some functional rehabilitation. So um, functional neurology, so brain based rehabilitation, which is, is really cool guys. If you've never heard of it, I don't have time to explain it. But she came in. And I had her doing exercise with oxygen therapy. I had her going through and we were doing um, some musculoskeletal work with her too and some things to improve, um, improve her function. Guys, she changed. Like, she's so, she's so, I wish she would come in and do this. But she just has a, she, um, how do I say this? She doesn't want to be on camera, right? She, or she doesn't want to take a picture. She wrote a very nice like testimonial of what happened to her, but she lost guys. You should have seen her, her, her driver's license. Like she wouldn't even let us take a picture. And it was because she didn't like us or didn't trust us or anything like that. It was more just this self image thing, right? She didn't, cause I wanted to see like, well, she had a driver's license and she should see, like it was like eight months apart, the difference. Like she's lost like 80 pounds. Her life is so different and she's such a sweet lady. But um, I was so glad that, see that just goes to show you that you don't have to do you don't have to have every resource available to you in the world to, to feel better, guys. You don't. You don't. I've seen it. I know. I know firsthand. So 
Um, yeah, I mean, testing helps you get faster, get more information so you can get faster results, but it's not the only way to approach things. And I got a lot of people that can't do that. So anyway, anyway, I'm, I hope that's, guys, you can do it without spending, you know, a, a fortune. But you, if you get a lot of testing done, you can spend thousands of dollars. And But, you know, I don't know. It, it is what it is. I, I, I just, you got, there's, there's multiple ways to do it and we'll figure it out. Um, uh, let's see. Hey, Karen. So your, Karen says her TSH is 4.6 in the morning at 9.30 before I eat, but 1.25 by 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Are you TSH? Like your thyroid stimulating hormone? How are you checking that multiple times in the day like that? Are you going to the lab and getting blood drawn? Or is there some kind of meter I'm not aware of? So Karen, I'm not sure about TSH. Um, A1C? I'm not sure what you're going, what, what, if that's TSH or how you're checking it, but Karen, um, Karen Kandra, if, if you, if you're still on here, definitely like post a comment, like, uh, let me know, like, how are you checking TSH two times per day? Like you're checking it multiple times. Listen, these hormones will fluctuate guys. If you're going to check your hormones, you're going to check your thyroid. What you want to do is check it, um, check it at the same time every day. Okay. Try to do that because there's going to be rhythms of production. I have Hashimoto's and no doctor here understands just how to pill and deal with it. Uh, Lindsay Utley says, hey, this is what was going on. Like I have Hashimoto's, no one here to understands. Lindsay, there's so much information you can get here. Or just listen. Look, if you're autoimmune, if you have Hashimoto's, address the drivers of the autoimmunity is a very reasonable thing to do. In similar cases, what I would do is put someone on a dietary approach. Autoimmune paleo is reasonable. Our six-week Hashimoto's transformation program is the reason I keep mentioning that, guys, is because for $50, there's so many resources available to you in our program. You'd be crazy to kind of go buy a book that's autoimmune paleo or something like that and then try to try to figure it all out. And you are, we have a support group and all kinds of stuff. It's, it's, it's a lot more than a dietary approach. That might be reasonable. So, Lisa, there's so much you can do. So much you can do. Hey, Tabitha. If your C3 complement's high, what does that mean? I'm not sure. <laughs> Just to be honest with you, I'm not sure about the C3 complement. I don't use that as a marker. Um, like so, so C4. Um, I actually had someone I was working with the other day, and we were looking at some of these labs. That I don't commonly run like C4, C4A, C3. These complements that are immune complexes, but they typically are indications. Like I, this, this one patient, she brought it in, um, and I looked at it, and her C4A was through the roof, like double the double the levels, and that typically indicates a bacterial or some type of infectious agent. So with the C3 complement being high, I, I'm I don't know C3 in particular. I have to look at look at it because I don't mm -hmm. I don't order that, but I understand what they are. So if they're higher, it tends to indicate that there's a there's an immune trigger. Okay, so I hope that makes sense, Tabitha. There's an immune trigger. So usually, like C4A was an indication of like a pathogen, most likely a pathogen. So what you do is you figure out what the pathogen is. Um, we just did a I did a test with someone uh, the other day. It's one of my I've gotten a few of these back. We, we use Cyrex Labs Array Number 12. It's a pathogen immune reactivity screen. We got one back the other day, and there was um, tick-borne pathogens that were positive. Guys, there's a lot of different things that can trigger immune responses. It's the more that I learn. It's sometimes I learn, and the, when I look at people and we find all these things wrong with them, I'm like, how does anyone ever get better with diet? But so many people do. So, so um, Tabitha, C3 complement's gonna mean, I'm, I believe, an immune response. So why is the immune system being pushed? Everything, uh, Miriam says, everything's connected. That's the secret to life. I know that's uh, time to jump. Oh, thank you, and make you my doctor. Um, Miriam, if we work together, I'll do the best I can for you. I just, uh, I'll, I'll help you as much as I can. Um, hi, Linda. Um, <clears throat> so when you you have um, when you have Hashimoto's, what else do the antibodies tend to attack? Okay, so Linda, when you have Hashimoto's, the antibodies are just tags. They're like sticky notes. So they float through the bloodstream. When they when they see a protein that they're designed to stick to, they stick to it. And when the antibodies stick to the protein, other immune system cells see that as foreign and come along and attack it and destroy it. So antibodies are just tags. They're not really, they don't destroy anything by themselves. It's when they adhere or they stick to the tissue or the proteins that they're designed, that they match for, they stick to it, and then that marks them for destruction by the immune system. So what happens though, is that as you continuously, your immune system, if you don't dampen the autoimmune process, and the, the immune system's on heightened alert, and it's reacting to all these things coming into the bloodstream, 
you can start reacting to more of your own tissues, okay? And, and really that process is through molecular mimicry and cross-reactivity. They're immune system concepts where molecular mimicry means, let's say you're reacting to a food, the food protein, if that food protein looks like your joint cartilage, you'll develop RA. If that food protein looks like your thyroid, your thyroid enzymes, you'll develop Hashimoto's. If that thyroid car if, if that food protein looks like the, the coating on your nerves, you develop multiple sclerosis. If it looks like your connective tissue, lupus. If it looks like um, you know, mucous membranes, Sjogren's. I mean, so guys, this is how it works. So you gotta figure out what's driving the immune system, remove it from the body do the best you can to repair the barriers. Like if it's leaky gut, then you've got to repair the barrier, but you've got to determine what's driving and causing the leaky gut, okay? So Linda, I hope that helps to understand. It's not the antibodies that will cause destruction, and, and it's not the antibodies that will cause expansion of the autoimmunity. It's the, it's the ongoing flared up immune system that will do that. Um, is it Veronica Castillo? Very, uh, very pretty name. You can find um, our um, okay. So you can find like our Hashimoto six from uh, our Hashimoto transformation program. We we um, so I do consultations with people like phone consultations for fifteen minutes. We charge fifty dollars, but for that we give you our our Hashimoto's transformation program. We just started this, guys. That program was four hundred ninety five dollars, but now what we can do it with our technology costs are lower, uh, development fees are lower, and stuff. It's it's done. Now we're just we're just going to try to help people with it as much as we can. So we're trying to do as much as we can to help you. If you go to like um, thyroid, I think it's thyroidconsult.com you can actually click on it if you'll see a video of me and I explain it but you can just you can get the program right there if you if you pay the fifty dollars what happens is we get a notification that you that you sign up for a consult so you'll get a you get a 15 minute consult with me regardless but you get the program immediately so you receive an email with a link so you can go and, and set up your username and password for our our website and get access to our program and once you're in there um, you'll start with week one but you can you can immediately join our our uh, thyroid support group which is the six it's the six week Hashimoto's transformation support group it's not our it's not it's not it's not our uh, greater hickory thyroid support group guys which has almost 9,000 people in there now I'm blown away by it um, we started it as a way to support our community of people here locally in hickory where, where I live and it just started growing and growing and now it's just it's unbelievable so um, I hope that's helping you but uh, Veronica now the other thing is is like an autoimmune paleo so our diet is the six-week Hashimoto's diet and lifestyle program is the the Hashimoto's transformation but the autoimmune paleo is something you can do too AIP diet is a is a is gonna be a similar framework to what we use it's not the same but a similar framework and you can you can go and um, find that stuff there are books on it and stuff that you can find so that's also an option I hope that helps Veronica hey Linda um, vitamin D levels always low vitamin D um, Linda Acosta I believe Linda says yeah um, vitamin D is always low so Linda uh, vitamin D is always low you, you might want to try if you're not using sublingual like a dropper use sublingual that's what I always recommend it bypasses the GI tract people that are autoimmune or that have gut problems they don't absorb well and so a lot of people have gallbladder dysfunction. Guys, vitamin D is fat soluble. You will not absorb vitamin D if you can't absorb fat well. So if you've had your gallbladder removed, you're gonna have problems with, with absorbing vitamin D and all fat soluble vitamins. Vitamins A, D, E, and K are fat soluble. So you're not gonna be able to absorb those. So sublingual vitamin D with a dropper, drop it, put it under your tongue, let it sit there for 30 seconds. You'll absorb most of it through the mucous membrane. It will get into the lymphatic system, bypass the GI tract, and your levels will come up much better. Now, a lot of people need to be a dosed higher though, Linda, but you need to have your, so for me, if I have someone that's around the 30, their blood serum level is 30 or lower, typically I'm gonna recommend somewhere between like 5,000 to 10,000 international units daily, sublingually, and then recheck it in six weeks and see where the levels are because a target target serum level for me is about 70. So blood serum is about 70, okay? So I hope that helps, Linda. Hey, Doris. Um, I don't, Doris says, hey, do I have a specific source for guidelines on the autoimmune paleo diet? I don't, I don't have that. I mean, there's a lot of sources online that you can like Google AIP. Um, our, our dietary program has foods to eat and avoid list and, and got guidelines there, but AIP, I don't have anything specifically, but there's a lot of resources online, so hopefully that, that helps you. Just let me know if you have a more, a more specific question. I'll, I'll try to help you. 
Um, Cindy, how do I t test H. pylori infections? I like blood serum levels that check, so a blood draw at LabCorp, and we check IgG, IgA, and IgM antibodies at one time. Now, there's different types of immune responses. That's, that's how I like to do it. You can do an H. pylori breath test. You can check for it in the stool, too. Those are great. So sometimes you have to do all three. Upper GI, lower GI with a stool test, blood serum to see if it's there. Um, I really like Cyrex Labs array number 12 because it checks a ton of pathogens at once. Okay? Hope that helps. Let's see. Okay, guys, you are so welcome. Okay, Lisa. Pepto-Bismol gets rid of H. pylori. Lisa, I haven't used Pepto-Bismol to get rid of H. pylori. There's probably a lot of things that you could take that would ki kill it. But, we no, I utilize mastic gum. I utilize all kinds of natural um, herbs and things that we know can, can help to kill it, usually for a period of about a month. And then we retest and see if it's gone. If it's not, we do another month. And we just we test and see if it's there treat it, um, support killing it, and then retest it. Talissa, um, do you work with thyroid cancer patients who have had their thyroid removed? I did have Hashimoto's before finding it turned cancerous and removed the thyroid. So Talissa, here's the thing. Um, I don't work with active cancer patients just for one primary reason. A lot of the protocols that oncologists are going to be doing with cancer patients are designed to specifically suppress or influence immune responses. Taking high doses of vitamin D or certain herbs may have an immune response that could interfere with their protocols. So I would only want to do that in combination, really close combination with an oncologist. So I don't treat active cancer patients, or if you know you have cancer, I, I don't work with that just because we don't want to interfere with with those types of therapies. We want to complement them, and there's a lot of ways to really, really complement them. I mean, good diet and nutrition is never going to hurt you there, okay? It's only going to help you. But certain supplements could cause problems, so that's why an integrative cancer approach I think is fantastic. And I would I would like to I would like to actually work closely with some oncologists and try to help more people with those problems. But um, you know I haven't had an opportunity. There's a there's an oncology clinic here and there may be an opportunity for me to do that some, but um, I haven't. So I hope that helps. Um, if you've, as long as you, you know, if you're, if you have been treated and you're a year out uh, or so and, you know, you haven't, it's, you know, it's technically we're in remission, then, then I'm going to help you as much as possible. I mean, as long as you're not going through active treatment and the oncologist says, hey, I want to work with someone nutritionally and with, um, you know, maybe using some nutritional supplementation to help support my systemic health. And they say, yeah, go for it. Let's do it. You know, I will help you all I can. So it just depends on where you are, okay? <clears throat> I hope that helps you. Hey, Cherie. Ask my doctor to test, for, to test for Hashimoto's. I know where this is going. I haven't even read the rest of it. And he just looked at me and said, it's time to see an endocrinologist. <coughs> okay, so Sheree, yes, um, most doctors don't know what to do with Hashimoto's at all. If you even bring it up, because they never, like a lot of a lot of primary care physicians, and it doesn't mean they're bad people at all, guys. So don't take me, don't take this wrong. They don't they don't test for it because they don't they don't treat it. They don't they don't even work with it. So they never test for it. So even when you mention it, they're like, wait, isn't that something the endocrinologist does? Like literally. And so if they if you think that, then you you get referred to an endocrinologist. Most endocrinologists are going to have a very similar approach, guys. Most of them are not going to test for Hashimoto's, and why is that? Why are they not going to test for Hashimoto's? Because what does their treatment have? What kind of treatment can your endocrinologist do for Hashimoto's, guys? What kind of treatment can they do? Nothing. Because why? Because their tools are medications, either a replacement medication or removing a gland. Does Hashimoto's, you know, does Hashimoto's require a hormone replacement? Well, maybe if it's creating hypothyroidism. But the autoimmune process it doesn't matter if you have that or not because what are they going to do for it? Are they going to remove your gland because it's autoimmune? No. So they don't, they don't have any tools. So if it doesn't change their treatment plan, then it's not medically necessary according to insurance guidelines. So they don't even order it most of the time. Now some people will order it and, the, and order the Hash, or test for Hashimoto's, but guys, the, the people that you're going to for help don't have the tools to help you. I want to just kind of like light bulb mo moments went off when I, when I started getting exposed to this stuff and I was like, oh my God, these people can't even help me. They don't even know what to do. They're, they're, uh, they don't know any more about it than I do. And it blows your mind, like as a patient, right? It blows your mind and you're like, how can these people, they're supposed to be the best, not be able to help me? And it drives you crazy and you just wanna like go, you just wanna be, you know, you get upset about it. I get it, guys, but 
don't be adversaries with your doctors. Don't, don't do it, it won't help you. I'm t you get more with sugar than you do with spice, guys. Don't be adversaries with your doctors. You, it's even if, because listen, you burn, you don't wanna burn bridges, okay? Don't burn bridges. I know, I'm not making excuses for them treating you badly and having poor bedside manner, but you can't go in and demand things because you gotta understand where they're coming from. They don't know. And then if you go in demanding things, they just think you learned something from some crazy guy on the internet. <laughs> and then they call me crazy. <laughs> so, which whatever, I'm not, that's nothing new to me. <laughs> so whatever. But um, Sheree, I digress. Um, it's time to see an endocrinologist. I mean, it's gonna be, I'm not saying that's not reasonable, but it's, you know, unfortunately guys, it's a lot of more the same in some, in some of those cases. Um, Rose, blood pressure. Yeah, that blood pressure is not great, but definitely needs to be, you know, Rose, your blood pressure is 151 over 105 with a, with a pulse of 94. Pulse over 90 is considered tachycardia. That's high heart rate. If that's occurring and, it's, and that's after you're taking thyroid hormone, you might be getting too much hormone, so you need to definitely look at that. Um, Lisa, have I heard of Pepto-Bismol gets rid of H. pylori? No, but it might. I don't know the mechanism, but it, it might. Um, okay, Christy. Thank you for the thumbs up. And Christy, thank you for that. Um, Hashimoto's doctor. Veronica Castillo says Hashimoto's doctor slash antibodies. I don't think that's it. Um, Veronica, it's going to be, Veronica, the, the website is going to be, um, if you want to get antibodies te checked, it's going to be, thyroidantibodytest.com and if you go to if you go to thyroid thyroidantibodytest.com and guys if you're looking for these links to like get your antibodies checked or um, or to get a get a consultation with me and by the way if you get your antibodies checked you get the Hashimoto's transformation program if you get a consult with me you get the Hashimoto's transformation program uh, so there's a lot of there's a lot of things that you guys can consider doing if you wanted to. Um, you can just go to the the office of Dr. Brad Shook on Facebook, scroll down on the timeline to like one of my most recent Facebook lives, like the one I did yesterday or the day before, and you'll see that at the top in the comments you can click on resources that we have available, and thyroid antibody test will take take you to get the so you can get the antibodies if you want those, or thyroid consult to get a consultation with me. So. <laughs> Both of those things will get you the, the Hashimoto's transformation program so you guys can do, you know, you can do a lot of things at once. We're trying to really, if you guys do that, I'm trying to give you guys a ton of value and help you, give you very specific action steps and things that are really going to make a difference so you're not just wasting money. Um, Laura says, I'm trying to do paleo. Yep, yeah, that is, that's what I need help. Laura, you might want to do like our transformation program, but um, there's, <laughs> it can be tough. I mean, like guys, Autoimmune paleo, what's the most common problem? Constipation. It's the most common problem. Constipation, I'm just gonna tell you. I mean, yeah, it's hard sometimes getting things out of your diet and changing your diet up, but constipation is definitely the most common problem with autoimmune paleo because people aren't eating enough fiber, um, enough, because you, you're, oh man, this is, I could go on a long explanation of this. But you gotta drink enough water, you gotta eat enough fiber. You're, they, people tend to get low blood sugar because they're used to eating a hamburger that has like 1,500 calories, it's like this big. And then they eat, they're like, okay, I'm gonna do autoimmune paleo, and then they get, they get a huge, they get lettuce, and they get a salad this big, and they're like, oh, it's so much food. But it has like 300 calories. You're used to eating a burger that's this big, that has 1,500, and you eat with your eyes, and you got a bowl of lettuce, and you're like, oh, that's a huge amount of food, but it has like 300 calories. So they get hypoglycemic, and they have all kinds of problems. <clears throat> so we, so one of the things that you gotta do is make sure you're eating frequently enough, make sure that you're eating low glycemic fruits like peaches, plums, nectarines, pears, make sure that you're eating lots of root vegetables like um, um, basically um, sweet potatoes, um, carrots, parsnips, turnips. Um, there's a lot of different types of those, um, different, there's other root vegetables you can have too guys that are that are like, uh, they're, they're not potatoes. Uh, white potatoes are actually considered a nightshade. But So anyway, that's those are big issues that can happen, Laura. So I hope that helps you out. Definitely can check it out. Um, hey, Christy. Yes, Christy, I appreciate the, the um, I'm glad that our program helped you get started towards working on your health. And uh, I hope it's really helped you out. I appreciate you. Um, Karen, how do I lower my blood sugars? What food should I eat? Karen, I'm going to tell you right now. Let me tell you. So you guys are going to, 
Um, not that not that our not, not that our, our transformation program is like a fix off for people, but let me just tell you. So you guys know that people come into my office and they never have one problem ever. It's like they've got Hashimoto's, they've got inflammatory bowel disease and IBS, they've got diabetes, they've they've got high blood sugar. So let me tell you, um, I've had numerous patients. Thank you for all the th- for all the um, the likes and the the hearts and the thumbs up, guys. Um, I would just tell you that so so many people come into my office and they have all these multiple problems. Blood sugar is extremely, extremely common. So diabetes is extremely common, guys. Extremely common. Most people have blood sugar dysregulation. So the dietary approach that we put them on, the Hashimoto's Transformation Program, guys, I have seen A1C go from 10.1 in one patient down to below 6, like almost um, pre-diabetic. I'm actually checking with one of my patients who should have their blood work done um, in an office patient that I've worked with for a while now, um, and we're going to see she's probably completely reversed her diabetes completely. That's not unco- that's not impossible, guys. Type two diabetes. Now, type one is autoimmune. Your pancreas can't make insulin, so you're you're insulin dependent. But but type two, I've seen A1C and blood sugar turn around so fast it make your head spin. Um, usually three to six months. So Karen. Like an autoimmune paleo diet is, in similar cases when I'm dealing with blood sugar, is very reasonable. Our, our Hashimoto transformation program has been fantastic for that. Fantastic. Um, Laura, you're welcome. Hey, Randy. Your scalp is crazy itchy. Hmm, it could be seborrhea dermatitis. could be a few different things going on making your scalp itchy. Um, itchiness, also histam- um, histamine reactions um, could be a problem too. Foods that are higher in histamine, you can just Google foods high in histamine. Foods will accumulate and build histamine as if you save them and they have leftovers. Um, you can take um, DAO, it's an enzyme, and you can take quercetin together, and those are good um, antihistamines. So um, sometimes if you take a good anti, um, like something that helps to metabolize histamine and eat low histamine diet, if you feel like you have a lot of lot more energy, histamine's a problem for you. So I'm not sure what's going on for sure, uh, Randy, but that could be it because AIP does have foods that tend to be higher in histamines in it, and that can be a problem for some people. Um, yes, Cynthia, our diet's fantastic for blood sugars. Um, my son lives in Chicago. I'm in UK. Yeah, Rose is in the UK, guys. We've got the UK on here. There's several people from all over the world. We've got Australia, the UK. We've got um, Africa. Um, we have um, Norway. There's several people. Yeah, guys, tell me where you're from, if you don't mind. Um, oh, your 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 aunt. Okay. So hi, Linda. It's 23 degrees in Chicago. Ouch. It's kind of cold. It's not too far. Uh, but it's a lot colder in Chicago than it is here. Trying to get a grasp of my Hashimoto's. Thanks so much. You're welcome, Jamie. Thank you, doctor. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate that compliment. Hi, Janice. 88 in Florida. No kidding. Let's go to Florida, guys. Let's let's soak up some sun and get our vitamin D and warm our bones. Um, hey, Rose. Thank you for that compliment. I appreciate that. Um, just take a thyroid pill. I'm sorry, Cynthia. There's so much more to your health than just a, a thyroid pill. I'm, I'm sorry. Um... What would give for 88? What I would give for 88? Yeah, Linda, I would give a lot for 88 degrees too. Cynthia, um, in gut pain every day. Cynthia, definitely, you know, got to be checked out medically, but absolutely consider like autoimmune paleo diet or something like that. Those might be reasonable. Wish I lived in Statesville. Cynthia, you guys, just so y'all know, I mean, y'all know, uh, I, I say this too much now. I, I don't want to like promote everything that we do, but if you need help, guys, we do consultations and I'll give you everything I can. I mean, as our, through our consultations now, you get our Hashimoto's Transformation Program, which is our dietary approach. So you get that for for the consultation. And that's like, like seriously, we, we started out, that was $495 when we started offering initially. And it was technology costs and time involved. Guys, you just don't know how much time was involved in but now we're trying to just help get it in people's hands. Um, but if you need help, we do distance consulting. We, we can work with you, and we can get labs done near you, too. Um, Laura says, I can't lose weight no matter what. My endo just makes me feel like it's my fault, but I'm trying. Glad you guys are helping me with diet plans. Laura, it's just not acceptable that people talk to you like it's your fault. That's a bunch of crap, quite frankly. Quite, quite frankly, there's no way to treat someone, treat people with respect. Even if it is their fault, it does no good to say it's their fault because you're, you're passing judgment when you say it's their fault. You don't know. I don't know. I'm not with people every day, so I'm not going to say it's your fault. I don't care if it, it is your fault. It's not going to help me to tear you down. 
So why don't I just focus on trying to help you, even if it is your fault, and let you have freedom to be wrong and to fail and not to be degraded for that. That's not what a doctor's job is. Help people out, teach them, encourage them, and be a freaking support be, Support them. I don't know why it, why it is these doctors, if they hate their job so much and they have such terrible bad, bedside manner, do something else. Life's too short to, to be miserable. So I'm sorry, Laura. I'm just ranting about your, your, endo, your, your, your endo visit. Um, that's me, complex cases. Yes, absolutely, guys. Um, I hope this is encouraging and helping you guys out. Um, guys, Linda, I appreciate it. that's a super nice compliment. We just have to keep, I just have to keep teaching and educating. Uh, and, you know, really, this stuff that I'm teaching and sharing, and sharing with you guys, it'll live forever. I mean, as long as the internet's around. So people can always find it and come back to it. So hopefully it, it's beneficial. Um, Laura, thank you. TSH, thank you so much for your time to talk to us. Yes, you're welcome. I appreciate you guys. I knew this would be a better time to catch you guys than uh, 1 o'clock in the middle of the day. Well, can we check our thyroids? Yes, Janice, if you need your thyroid, if you want to get your thyroid checked, only the people that see this will know. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a secret. If you get your thyroid antibodies checked on our page, okay, if you go to thyroidantibodytest.com, You'll find you see it's a video of me. You can get your thyroid. You can request to get your thyroid antibodies checked throughout the U.S. We can send you an order form, and you can go to a local lab. Once you pay for that, I'm not making this available. I'm not going to share this very often because it's just a lot of responsibility. It's a lot of work for us. You can. Well, what happens is when you when you purchase those on the next page, you can actually I make it available to you that you can get your full thyroid panel checked. So you can get. 10 markers evaluated, TSH, total T4, total T3, free T4, free T3. Um, you can get your thyroid antibodies, both of those checked, reverse T3, T3 uptake, and, and a thyroid index. That's 10 markers. You can get those done, and that actually gives you, you it's um, you get a 30-minute strategy session if you get that with me. So we spent 30 minutes just talking about what you can do and what those results mean. So yes, Janice, you can get, I think that was your question. Um, Yes, guys, have hope, believe in yourself, don't quit. It's the main thing. Believe in yourself. Don't let people tear you down. Believe in you. Continue to make progress. Con continue in the face of defeat. If you feel like you're defeated, do not give up. That's why I've talked about this before. You've got to have a reason why, guys. Why do you want to be healthy? I mean, you've got to really... You've, Oh, that's too bright. <laughs> you've got to you've got to fight for yourself. No one else is going to do it. You've got to fight and you've got to be determined. Uh, Randy, I'm not sure, buddy, with the scalp. Like I said, like histamines or what, what's going on. I'm not positive. Um, I'm not positive what's causing the scalp to be itchy. But I would suspect, especially if it's something recent with dietary change, it's going to be um, more along the lines of like histamines, possibly. Yeah, Laura, I've never heard of being able to check your TSH yourself either. Um, Shannon, ocular migraines can't help but contribute to the hormones. Ever had a patient that has hypothyroid has ocular migraines? Man, I've seen I've seen lots of migraines with with, with hormone dysfunction. Yes, um, hypothyroidism, a common symptom, is uh, is actually is migraines or, or headaches. So yeah, they can be multifactorial. Man, headaches can be so many reasons, but absolutely there's an association with that. Hi, Karen. Um, Huh, interesting. So Karen had it, her blood drawn. So this is how far, I guess there's probably a ton of comments here. Karen said, um, I've had my, t she had her TSH drawn. She said she had her TSH drawn two times. She actually had it drawn in the morning um, and, and it was 4.6 before breakfast and then she decided to have it drawn in the afternoon after she ate and it was 1.25. Why is this? Um, they are fluctuate throughout the day, but it's a good question, right? The, the, the reality is, is that these labs are a snapshot in time. So your body has a rhythm of production of, let's see, that'll probably work better. Your body has a, um, guys, your body has a rhythm of production for your hormones. So if you're, you know, during the, during the day, like, so cortisol, for example, that's why we can't do a cortisol test at just one point in time in the day and that be the, the end of it. You, you have to check it at the specific time of day. So cortisol is produced on a rhythm. It's higher in the morning, it drops down and is at the, its lowest at about two or three, and then it rises through the evening and at night, and then it's high again in the morning. And it's a rhythm of production. All hormones, all hormones have a rhythm. 
So TSH is something that you're going to want to check at a, the same time. You get your labs drawn, guys. Check them at the same time, okay? So Karen, I'm really not sure. It's just a, um, I would attribute it to a rhythm of production, most likely. And if you took a thyroid hormone replacement, that could also, as your levels rise, your thyroid hormone's levels rise, it could suppress it, okay? Hi, Penny. TSH testing regularly done every three months. No, it's not usually done every, it just depends. Doctors will sometimes do it every six months. But TSH, guys, is so inadequate today. It's just not enough. It's not, you need more than TSH. Um, let's see. Guys, you know what I just realized? It's 625. How long have I been here? An, an hour? Gosh, there's so many great questions. I don't mean to skip it. Um, Jill, I see your question here. 80s, no one knows why their blood levels off too. Lots and lots of symptoms. Uh, so Jill was, Jill, I'm so sorry I can't answer that right now. It's just because um, I'm, guys, I need to go. I need to go home and, and eat. But um, blood tests sound like they're in zone and what the problem is. Yeah, um, yeah, I know, Rose. It's so tough in the UK. We're still working out like exactly how we can get some of these thyroid labs done. In other countries. It can just be challenging, guys, because your doctors, you know, if your doctors will order them for you, it's not a problem. I mean, we can send advanced tests. We can send some kits over that are blood spot tests um, if you're in other countries and, um, and help you investigate this further. We can do all the advanced tests we can pretty much send to another country, like Cyrex labs, stool panels, blood... Um, Urine, like um, urine cortisol panels and hormone panels, you just have to send them back expedited to the lab wherever they go. So we can send those. It's actually just the standard blood tests, the, the blood draws that are more, more challenging to get in other countries uh, for some reason. So um, Nancy, thank you for the compliment on the explanation of antibodies. So many people have autoimmune diseases. Yeah, they're, it's unbelievable. Do genetics work into this? Guys, to develop an autoimmune condition, you have to have three things, a genetic predisposition, a trigger, and a leaky gut. Alessio Fasano right there. So yes, genetics play into autoimmunity, absolutely. Um, guys, here's the deal. I'm at Vanessa's comment. I'm so, so sorry, but I'm going to have to go. Um, i got to get home. There's bunches and bunches of comments. I'm super appreciative of you guys. Like they're just, I'm just scrolling in their unbelievable comments. Guys, do, the, do me a favor. Post your, com post your questions. Like So you, you, got, you guys are watching this. You might not have your questions answered. Post your questions here, and I'll help you as much as I can. If it, you know, well, I'll look at them later and try to try to answer these again. I promise you, I'll be live again the next every day. I'm trying to go live for a little bit and answer questions if I can. Um, I'll tr I'll try to help you guys out. Post your questions below. Um, if you have, if you want, if you're interested in like the, getting your antibodies checked, go to thyroidantibody.com and get your antibodies checked. You, we can order them for you around the country. Two, you can go to hashimotosconsult.com. HashimotosConsult.com and you can get a consult with me for 15 minutes. Both of those guys, if you get your antibodies or a consult, we're going to give you our transformation program for $50. It's, it used, that was $4.95. Guys, I promise you it will save you time and money. We have a private Facebook group. It will help you. Um, post your comments. Guys, please do me a favor. Please share this with people. They need to hear this message. They can watch this. This, this will be saved on Facebook. They can watch this exact thing. We've gone through so many common questions that I get. This would be so helpful to people. So please share it with others. And please do give me a bunch of thumbs up, hearts, and, uh, and, and likes. I appreciate you guys so much. And I hope this is adding value to your life. I'm really, it's our mission to try to help people change the world and um, really improve people's health. So I appreciate you guys a lot. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'm going to get on the road. But um, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow, and I hope you have a, a wonderful, wonderful evening. Thanks. Hey, guys. Dr. Shook, thank you for viewing our videos. I hope they help you out. If you want to, just subscribe to our channel somewhere here. You can watch a video um, that YouTube's actually selected for you, so hopefully it'll help you out. If you need any other information or resources, just look in the description. We've got links to our website, to our nine lab test guidebook, and everything else that we do. I really appreciate you, and I hope you guys have a great day.